us that this the team is still working on current with mm-hmm. the game, then you end up on a back of five blocks without the half time. Uh, it was a bit of uh, 50-50 with me because, you know, last year when I um, did the same thing to this angle, I didn't come back. <laughs> so I was a bit nervous with trying to just come out and play on it off rip because I have tried that before and I made the, you know, I made matters worse um, my rookie season. So I'm trying to come back after, you know, spraining my ankle and coming back to play on it made it worse a lot. So it, re- it was really just you know, 50-50. I wanted to be out there with the team. I didn't want to, because like I told myself after the time that I missed the Miami game with my um, right hand and stuff, I didn't want to miss any more games. You know, I just, I wanted to be out there on the floor, whether it was on the sideline or just, you know, out there playing. So I mean, I came out there and I took a step forward with a lot with my toughness, I would say, because, you know, time and time again, I've tried to, you know, fight through injuries or anything like that. And I just couldn't do it. But that night for sure I came out and I took a bigger step than I thought I was. <laughs> good, man. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got a matchup against Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. I mean, just master physicality. Rudy Gobert is a real physical guy. He plays aggressive. He does his job. You know, he goes for rebounds. He blocks shots. He basically does everything I does, but at an elite level. So basically playing at his level is going to be the main thing, playing with a lot of physicality and coming out with energy the first five minutes of the game. Yeah, in terms of the, um, just, I guess, inconsistencies on offense you guys have had, mm-hmm. how much of that relates to the defense? Like, how much of it has to kind of come from the defense first, or did, are those two things not really great? Um, I mean – you know, time and time again, we say defense leads to easy offense. That's us for sure. Because if we can get stops down the floor, we get into our offense way easier than, you know, what we have been. You know, um, sometimes coach says in practice, the main thing that kind of like sets us back is we take the ball out of the hoop too much. That is the main thing. So really just preventing is, you know, much scoring as we have have been letting, you know, get through and keeping us from taking the ball out a lot more and just getting into easy offense, flowing into it and not really just going down, calling a play time and time again. It's just one of the main things that help us excel on offense for sure um, to get the looks that we want and to really just get the um, energy in the ball that we want to move the ball, have pace going up and down the floor, little things like that. In terms of, um, I guess, technical, what you guys want to run, the ceiling for this team, do you feel like who the Wizards are with what you guys did through the first 13 whatever games or is it more what's happened in the last 13 games or is it somewhere in between? It's for sure what we did in the first 13 games. We were working to really just stay consistent with that level of play. And then once we get back to it, I mean, it's, you know, the sky's the limit for us, for sure. You know, we're going to come out night in, night out, and we're going to play Wizards basketball. We're not going to really just set, have anything frustrate us to keep us out of our game, keep us out of our element. Everybody's going to do their job, and we're going to play on the string. You watch the players like Rudy Gobert, your shot blocking, uh, the numbers are comparable to his. Of course, he balls for so many shots. He mm-hmm. controls the game defensively. Um, what, what does he do to help you like to get to him? Stay out of foul trouble. That's the main thing. Because, <laughs> you know, I, time and time again, I don't see him having two fouls in the first three minutes of the game. So that's one thing that um, I'm really working on to where I can, you know, alter shots without – you know, getting a foul called on me every time I go up and try to alter one. So my main thing, that, that's just the main thing. That's just the main focus is really just staying out of foul trouble. You know, I really can't say anything else. You know, I block shots, I alter shots. But at the end of the day, when I'm I'm not on the floor because of the fouls that I, you know, commit time and time again. So that's just a thing that I have to work on for myself personally. But other than that, you know, everything else is in the right place. That's just one thing that I'm still trying to figure out in this league. <laughs> Um, really just, you know, my main thing is not really just getting frustrated with fouls, you know, it's going to happen, but at the same time, really just trying to pick the brain of the refs, try to figure out how can I, you know, get away with certain things. And if there's certain things I can't get away with, what can I do to prevent getting a foul if I can't get away with that little thing, you know, because it's time and time again, where I see guys doing little things in the league and stuff, they don't get called for it. So I'm trying to get to that point too. You know, I just gotta, <laughs> I just gotta kind of like, filter the things that I say to the refs sometimes. You know, I think that's why they don't give me some of the stuff they give the other guys. You know, just being a little nicer to them. They got a job too, so that's something I got to understand as well. Getting frustrated and going up and just screaming and yelling in their faces is something that's not going to help me in my career. I want to ask you about uh, the charity event. Mm-hmm. Like the new venture for you, mm-hmm. the first and second one there. 
Yeah. Um, what is it all about? And why would that cause? Why would that cause? Issues? Um, it's so off my block. They do a lot of stuff in the community and stuff around where I stay around here. Um, so I I believe that. My girl, she does like this dog stuff. It's um Rover, and one of the clients that she works for, they become real good friends and stuff. And they and she introduced her to the people from off my block, and we've gotten to the point where we wanted to do this little community thing because I wanted to get back to, to the community. That's one of my biggest things that I want to use my platform and just you know my resources and stuff to be able to do is get back to the community and bring smiles to the people's faces that really don't I would say have anything to look forward to for Christmas and certain things like that you know they wake up time and time again they don't know which way they can go or how they can do it or anything like that so being able to be in this position and have like little things brought out like this it's real big for me and just day in day out I think about it and I've always wanted to do it so having it um appear to be like my first one is I'm forever grateful for that because I can be able to give back and you know put smiles on people's faces for kids and their families so on and so forth Jackson, are you good to relay questions if people from the audio chat have some? Yeah, if they type them in, I can read them aloud here. Okay. okay. Everyone on the Zoom call, we're having some issues um, with them hearing us in the room. So if you could just either type your questions or um, maybe we can start with Josh asking his so, so Jackson can relay it. We'd appreciate it. You guys can't hear me. Is that correct? I can I hear can, you. Yeah, we, we can, can hear you. That the Gaff can't hear you. So yeah, if, I can't. if oh, you okay. just say it aloud, I can relay it to Gaff. Okay, that's sad. awfully complicated okay, for a guy like me, but I will do it. All right, so it's easy for us, Daniel, to forget that you're only in your third season. How much will added games, added minutes help you avoid fouls? You said, just confirming how the added games and added minutes help him avoid fouls? No, how will added minutes, added games, and the rest of that your career yeah, help you avoid fouls? How, in your third year of your career. Oh. How will added games, added minutes help you avoid fouls moving forward? Oh, um, moving forward, just really just the mindset of, it, you know, coming out and playing a lot smarter. And I would say being a lot more aware of the things that I should and shouldn't do. You know, time, I would say not going for some shots, you know, when it comes to me being out of position and just little things like that. Something that, um, I can be aware of to where I don't put myself in a bad position because I might I may get beat off of a dribble or I may be, you know, tired during that play or something might happen either or and just not really going for it and trying to prevent somebody to lay it up because, you know, time and time again, I have done that before. It's just, you know, making that, I would say, half extra effort <laughs> to try to go block a shot or anything like that. And I hit a, hit a guy in the back of the head and I get a foul. It's just little things, you know, just really just paying attention to detail and not doing any little thing that'll get me an early foul early in the game. And then another one from Josh. What leads you to believe the team is more of the team that started 10 and three rather than the team that hasn't played quite that well lately? What leads you to what leads me to believe that um, it's just the mindset that we come in day in, day out, you know, I understand that it hasn't been going our way these last couple of games. We finally got one in Detroit to where we have got out of this slump that we in. But it's a long season. You know, we can get back to the things that we were doing earlier in the season throughout the rest of the season. We just have to come. We came in with that same mindset, trying to figure it out, coming in, coming together as a team, coming together as a unit, the coaches, the players, um, so on and so forth, and just learning the ways and paying attention to detail and figuring out the little things we can do to get back to playing like that, you know, because I mean, slumps happen, you know, we always have ups and downs. We always have obstacles, you know, stuff happens, but at the end of the day, if we come together as a team, we can figure it out and we can for sure like progress throughout the, throughout the rest of our season and just figure it out and, you know, win games night in, night out. Christos, do you have a question for Gaff? Uh, yes, I have. I have one. Hello, Gav. How are you? He he can't hear actually on this uh, on his end of the call, yeah. so we'll just translate it to him. Okay, no problem. I would like to ask him what is like what he likes most about the mindset of that team. Yeah, what do you like most about the mindset of this team? Um, is that we don't have any quit. Um, that's the main thing. You know, we come in day in day out and we work. 
Um, and we really want to be better than what we have been playing. And so to be able to do that, we have to come in and we have to put in the work for it, I would say. You know, no matter whether it's 10 to 20 minutes or if it's 45 minutes to an hour. You know, we come in and we put the time in and we figure it out together as a team and not individually. Because, I mean, there's no iron team. We have to play all together as a unit. We have to play on the string. You know, we have to play for each other. We have to play for the team, for sure, because we all want to go further than what we did last year in the playoffs. So, with that being said, we just have to work for it. And how far uh, this team can go this season? How far can this team go this season? Oh, I mean, we can go far, you know. And everybody has to believe that. I believe that we can go past the first round. And so even past that, you know, just really just having the mindset of taking it one game at a time and not really just being focused on the frustrations that we've had, not being focused on the obstacles that we've had. You know, there's times where we could talk about, you know, what didn't go well in certain games, but what does it take to fix that? And what does it take to get back to where we were playing, you know, at the beginning of the season, the first 13 games of the season, you know, when we were winning night in, night out, when we were winning at home, when we were winning on the road, you know, getting back to that mindset. Because I believe we can go far. I'm pretty sure everybody else on the team believes that we can go further too. You know, we just have to have the mindset night in, night out that we can be a championship team. And, And one, one more. Yeah. One more. It seems like forever that the team has had two full days between games. How useful was having a practice today? It was very useful. <laughs> I've been tired. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> um, other than that, you know, having an off day, that was great to have, you know, just coming off of a bit of a long road trip, had a back to back, like right off the bat on the road trip and then having one more and then finally getting home to just really just relax and stuff. I'm pretty sure it was good for everybody on the team. You know, we had a lot of frustration, I would say, and being able to have a time to ourselves pretty sure all of that frustration has gotten out of us. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody has their own ways to deal with that. My own way is sleeping and eating and playing my game. <laughs> Other than that, you know, I mean, it was real good being able to come in, get some practice in, get some, you know, get our sweat going. I think that it depends on where the biggest uh, area of slippage. That's right. Uh, so. <laughs> today it was offense. <laughs> uh, it usually is the defensive end, but uh, today was more offense. Didn't show any film. We just talked at length about some things that we've, uh, some areas and trends we've seen that we want to stay away from. Uh, cleaning things up, maybe sh shortening some of our packages after makes so that we, we got more clarity. We can play with a little bit more thrust up the floor. Guys can get to spots and we're not overthinking it. Um, but today after day off, it's always like, let's get, get them moving, get them going. And I thought, honestly, it was one of our best practices we've had in weeks. Um, I ask this because I guess this is how you guys were at the really strong start of the season. But does overall, do you have to get back to kind of everything coming from the defense and then everything maybe from there? Or not necessarily? No, I, I mean, I think it's both, both sides of the ball, you know, tie in, you know, they're, they're correlated. If you're taking bad shots, you're not organized, you're turning it over, it's going to hurt your defense. And, and likewise, and so I think it's uh, – we just have to make sure from game to game, and sometimes it's from halftime, half to half, of cleaning those areas of, of, of concern up. We can't just let it continue. Uh, anytime we have an opportunity to, to go back, hammer away at some of our principles, I think it's important to do so. Without having a ton of days to, to, to practice, I think, you know, a day like today is invaluable. What makes today – I thought our energy, our focus, um, start our overall collective spirit was great. Uh, there's good pace to things, good flow. We weren't, you know, on the floor very long, but I thought we got value in everything we tried to do. In terms of trying to figure out who you guys are, I guess, would you say the identity of this team, the ability of this team is more the first 13 games of the season or the most recent 13 games of the season, somewhere in the middle, probably? I'm hoping it's closer to the first 13. Um, And that doesn't mean, you know, we haven't played hard or, you know, played well in stretches, but um, I think we have to look back at those first 13 and, and, and get to somewhere on that end of the spectrum, especially on the defensive end. Um, I think, and I said it last night or the other night, um, we struggled a little bit offensively early and we had to kind of hang tight to our defense to keep us in games. We've started to, we've seen an uptick in the offense, you know, obviously in certain quarters, but have we relaxed a little bit as far as our defensive focus and energy? That's the challenge.
I, I think we're much better defensively than you know we, we've been. But uh, when you look at the overall numbers, I think we're middle of the pack right now in overall defensive efficiency. But that's where you get back to the rankings. You know, we're, we're 15th, but we're giving up 106.8 points per, per game. You know, that's 12 less than we did last year. So if you said at the end of the season, hey, we're going to hold teams to 106, I'd be like, where do I sign up? So I don't, you know, fall into the whole ranking thing, but that we do see slippage and we have to find ways to, you know, correct it and get back to who we need to be. I know you guys just discussed your new book. So what does the rally shave? Or- no, <laughs> not at all. I, if, if that has any correlation to us winning, then uh, then I'll shave every day. But <laughs> I don't think it was anything. I just got tired of looking at it and uh, decided to bring it down a little bit, uh, much to my wife's dismay. But it'll be back soon. Um, where is Brewery? Uh, well, he's involved in you know in practices now. Um, he's still limited with the contact. Um, I'm hoping, and this is just me talking, I'm hoping in the next uh, week or so we can see more contact on a daily basis and, and start implement, implementing him in the five on five. Um, that's not going to be right away. Um, I still think he has to get through uh, some small sided games, two on two and three on three. Um, it's unfair and probably unwise to just kind of throw him out there. But um, I'm hoping that we'll see that transition in the next couple of weeks. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving to Zoom questions again. If anybody has questions from Zoom, please put them in the chat and I will relay them to coach. Um, how important is it to see a player like Anthony Gill come off the bench and step up on both ends? You know, I give AG a ton of credit. You know, he's a guy who hasn't played a ton, um, but his mindset and his approach has been consistent since day one. He's uh, you know, one of the first people here in the, in the morning, gets his work in. He's energetic. He's lively. He brings good, uh, good vibes to the group. He's always encouraging his, his teammates. So to see him get the opportunity and to have some success and impact winning, I think is important, not only for him, but uh, you know, for the group. You know, the message being, hey, stay ready. Do your job. Uh, stay ready to play when your number's called. Go out and uh, find a way to help us. What did you like most about the way the team bounced back in Detroit? Well, you know, I thought we were, we were very competitive, you know, as far as our, our energy. I, I didn't think we had a lot of purpose. And the challenge was at half, you know, the, the team had struggled. They had lost nine in a row. We lost four in a row. So no matter of who wants it more. Um, Pope got us going early in the third. Uh, we were able to push the lead a little bit. And, you know, obviously struggled the last six minutes of regulation. That's where we have to be better, you know, staying organized, getting good looks, not turning the ball over. Um, but the fact that we were able to hold on, execute in, in overtime, and come away with it was great. Uh, from Josh, Montrez's numbers were so ridiculously good over the first 20 games at Harping on any stats less than that would be unfair. That said, are opponents defending him any differently lately? Oh, yeah, we have. I mean, the teams are switching and then trying to front him. Don't, they're not letting him catch with as much ease because uh, they know the impact he can have when he catches in the post. Uh, I think there's a, a concentration to keep him off the offensive glass. Uh, so some of it, yes, is the, the coverages we're seeing with him. Um, and, you know, he's had breakout games throughout the year. He's, he's been a big part of our success. We have to continue to find ways to get him involved, but he, he's got to also make sure he's bringing that energy from the moment he steps on the floor. About a third of the way through the season, what about the team has impressed you most so far? And in what ways do you envision the team will improve through the rest of the season? You know, early on, it was, you know, how this group pulled together so quickly. Um, the synergy I thought we developed. Um, we won a lot of tight games, so just that spirit of resilience. Um, you know, I want to see just a, from here on out, you know, a level of play that's been more consistent. Uh, can we sustain our play from quarter to quarter, from game to game? Uh, I think that's important as we kind of get into the meat of the season uh, and finally, you know, wrapping things up into uh, getting prepared for the postseason. Have you had a player professional experience before you got to the NBA? Was this Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> like you said, I have played a lot of professional years. Um, for me, last year was just more of learning how the NBA works, um, learning you know how we're supposed to move as NBA players. Um, so this year, is, I'm, a, I'm a lot more comfortable uh, just in my role as you know, being a servant for the team, being here for the guys, being a leader in that way. 
um, you know, just try to support the guys uh, the best way that I can. Uh, so I'm definitely more comfortable this year, um, especially because it's not a COVID year. Um, I mean, there's still COVID. We still have protocols, but um, it's not as uh, strict as it was in the years past where we couldn't leave our hotels or anything like that. I couldn't organize team events. So, um, you know, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's been a blessing this year to be able to come back here and be a part of what we're trying to do. Um, speaking of that, uh, it seems like you uh, interact with your, your kids and your family like during games. Uh, I guess you couldn't do that last year, right? Because they, they couldn't attend a lot of games because of COVID. Yeah. So what's that been like? I mean, it seems like family's pretty important. Yeah, that's been awesome. You know, even in my years overseas, anytime I see my kids or my wife in the, in the stands, you know, I always go talk to them. Uh, because for me, you know, that's more important than, than anything that, you know, I do on the court, um, you know, so I'm going to make them feel special every t every chance I get, um, you know, and it's cool, you know, as a, as a kid, you grow up, and you, you know, just think about, you know, the times that you get to be in the NBA and your family gets to watch you. Um, and now I, I get to live that and uh, I'm going to take full advantage of it and uh, make sure that my wife and kids know that I love them so much. Anthony, uh, Wes called today one of the best practices I know there haven't been a lot of practices so yeah. far, it might be low, but um, can you kind of speak to that? And, and yeah, kind of mentioned Chris, but we'll get some frustration out and get a sweat going, all that stuff. Yeah, the intensity was great today. It, you know, all the guys in the locker room after the practice were joking, you know, it's kind of like a training camp practice. Uh, you know, I think we needed that. Um, you know, sometimes you can come into practice, NBA practices are not, you know, really high intense, uh, high level practices every time out. Um, and today, you know, coach really emphasized the fact that we're going to work today. Uh, we kept that energy throughout, you know, started to practice to the end. And, you know, it was something that we needed. Um, you know, we're in somewhat of a, a rough patch right now and trying to find our way. And, you know, no other way to do that than work hard in practice and try to get that flow back. Um, and that's what we try to do. And uh, hopefully it pays off in the future. What led to focus in practice today? Uh, just to be locked in from the beginning. You know, a lot of times, like I said, you know, we can just be out there lollygagging and floating around and, uh, you know, we don't get anything accomplished when we do that. Um, and today, today's training camp practice was awesome for us. Uh, you know, I think everybody was able to go out there and work hard. Uh, nobody was complaining. Everybody had, you know, their, their work hats on and, and we got it done today. You guys have to go against Rudy Gobert. Or is Um, you know, he's a great player. Um, don't want to take anything from him, but, you know, every game that we play that, you know, the only thing that matters is what we do. You know, if we go out there and play the hardest that we can, and the biggest thing is play for each other, you know, and, and we get in trouble a lot of times where we try to make it happen, you know, one player at a time instead of working as one unit. Um, so if we go out there and play as a unit, I think that we'll be okay. You know, I think that um, his defensive presence will be, um, you know, still an impact on the game, but if we play and focus on us, I think we'll be okay. Um, Coach Dunsell recently said that he's taken some plays from Miller League, like some ball movement. Mm -hmm. Have you played in both leagues? Do you know there's any wrinkles in the offense that turn around? Yeah, for sure. You know, just the amount of passes that we have sometimes in possessions. You know, when we're really locked in and we're playing together as a team, playing for each other, that, that basketball reminds me a lot of Europe. You know, because that, that's all Europe, European basketball is, is playing team basketball. It's not a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one players on this team who are really talented. And, you know, they can get the job done a lot of times without, uh, you know, having to make a pass. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to, you know, get everybody involved, uh, let everybody know, or let everybody touch the ball and get a rhythm for the game. What's it like having Rudy back in practice and just keep more involved? I'm glad you brought Rui up. You know, it's 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 really it's really good to have him back, man. His spirit in the practice is is unbelievable. You know, his spirit just around the facility is amazing. Um, uh, he's going through you know his own personal things, um, but every day every day he steps in here, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell, you know, because he just carries that professionalism on his shoulders, um, and he's just a great all around teammate. He actually today, since you brought him up, he got us all these watches. Um, and, you know, this is my first watch since high school. So it's the Rui Hachimura G-Shock, um, you know, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm going to wear it every single day. But, you know, Rui's a great guy, and I think he's really going to help out our team so much and um, in ways other than on the court. Well, uh, Danny, you know, I guess we've seen him uh, for several years at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see kind of year over year at this uh, development of this kind of team? Uh, yeah, I think Danny's really grown into his own. You know, I think last year – 
having a guy like Russ, I always tell this to Denny, having a guy like Russ on the team was really good for him because he, Russ showed him how to be professional and show him how to be, to play at a high level every single night. And, you know, not everybody around the league can do that. Um, and, you know, he was on Denny, you know, every single day, every single practice, every single game, he was on Denny. Uh, but this year, um, since he's left, Denny is able to kind of come into his own, you know, kind of find his own identity, swag, if you will. Um, and he's enjoying the game. Um, so it's, it's really fun to see him kind of growing into the, the player that he's going to eventually become. Um, just it's going to take time and uh, a lot more uh, patience on his end because he's really hard on himself. You know, he wants to be good. You know, he has the whole country of Israel on his back um, and, you know, he, he embraces it wholeheartedly, uh, but it's just going to take some time. Yeah, so I saw the watch in one of the games when he, one of his first games uh, back on the bench, he had the watch on and I went up to him. I was like, man, that's a nice watch. He's like, this is, this is my watch, Rui Hachimura. I was like, well, what, don't be selfish, you know, like, <laughs> like share, share the wealth. And he said, okay, I'll get it for everybody for Christmas. So, you know, he, he blessed us with these watch and this watch and uh, we're all thankful for it. No, we got in today and it was in our locker. So great guy, great surprise, you know, to have Rui back and then a watch at the same time. <laughs> Your teammates can also thank you. Honestly, yes, that's the real, I'm the reason why we got these watches, if you think about it. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It's all Rui. <laughs> okay, moving over to Zoom. Corey has told us he's latched onto you as an experienced player to use as a role model. How did that relationship develop from training camp to now? And what motivates you to do the little extra things like watching film with him before games? Uh, you know, it's funny. When Corey came on his pre-draft or his pre-draft workout, I was passing him, you know, so I got to speak to him like, you know, through passing when he was in his pre-draft process. Um, and we kind of connected from there. Um, you know, Corey's a great guy. And then he came to training camp, saw me doing extra conditioning after practice. He wanted to jump in and he wants to be a great player. And he is going to be a great player in this league. Um, you know, it's just for me, I've, I've played a lot of professional years. And, you know, for me to be able to pass any kind of knowledge that I have onto him, it's just been amazing. I've, ever been, I've, I've also been able to learn from him as well. You know, he's a, he's a professional. He's a, the best of the best when it comes to professionalism. Um, he carries himself well every single day. Um, and for me, you know, I just as much as I want to you know, teach everybody, I want to learn just as much as uh, as I can. So he's been great. And um, to watch his development over this year, a lot of the times, you know, he's been playing great throughout the year. Um, and I tell him all the time, you know, just because your playing time isn't reflecting, um, you know, what what you think you should be doing on the court. You know, he's doing a great job, you know, and. I just encourage him every single day. There's nothing he's doing that's keeping him off the court. It's just that, you know, we have a lot of experienced veterans in front of him. So just to stay positive every single day and uh, keep pushing through. Your mindset seems to be stay ready. How do you keep that mindset? Um, every day I come into work, I, I have that mentality, like I'm about to play a game. Uh, and whenever my opportunity is called, you know, I go out there and play as hard as I can. Um, I... You know, in college, you know, we had our whole program organization was built off servanthood mentality, and I've never let that go. You know, I want to serve my team, the teammates as much as I can. I want to be here for them. You know, I'm not going to be able to play 40 minutes a game, um, you know, and my mindset was, okay, how do I help the team in other ways? You know, how can I help them on the bench? Can I get water for them, you know, during halftime? Can I do whatever I can, you know, to, to help these guys out? Um, and then when my time comes, you know, I need to be ready. So I stay ready on my conditioning, ready on my shots, everything like that. So, um, but really ultimately it's just, I want to be here for the guys. And that means if I get in the game, I have to be ready. Both great players. Um, and they both have an amazing talent in, in to sc of scoring the ball. Um, you know, I think uh, playing with Alexei, it, it helped me out a lot because, you know, I was able to see to how I was able to learn how to play with a, a dominant ball handler. Um, you know, someone who's going to have the ball for majority of the game coming here. Brad is not as dominant as Alexei was on the ball. Um, but, you know, it's it's also translated in the way that I've also been in a situation where I know, you know, how to play and how to thrive in those situations.